We want to take you now back to Washington, where moments ago, attorneys for the Oath Keepers leader, Stuart Rhodes, after he was sentenced to 18 years in prison for his role in January 6th. Let's watch. He put a lot of thought in this for a long time. He sat through three of these trials. He's got 20 plus Oath Keepers to sentence, and he's got to do it comparatively. There's a provision in the, in the code that says he's that's why I asked the prosecutor yesterday, why are you asking for 25 and what are you going to do with these other guys? So I think he, he genuinely cares about doing it correctly and I just think he put a lot of effort into it. Did you think that was a just sentence? I can't answer that. I mean, we have differences of opinion on some of the evidence. I, of course, I wanted less. The prosecutors wanted more. But based on Judge Mehta's uh, belief of what the facts show and his recitation of that yesterday and today, um, I believe that was lower than what I thought Meta would do. It was lower than you thought today. Yeah. I, after today, I thought it would be higher. Do you think you did the best job you could do as a lawyer for Stuart Rhodes? I do. I think we worked our asses off. Yeah, for a year and a half. I've given. I've, I mean, we've given a year and a half of our life to this. I, I think as a, a lawyer uh, representing and advocating for a client, you always look back and you're. You're second guessing yourself. You always see things you could do differently. I, I, I genuinely don't think we could have in any way worked any harder than we did. This upended our lives. Not that that's what that's about. It's not. But th this took a toll on everybody. And in terms of what you asked about the sentencing, uh, we're clearly Stuart's advocates. And I, like Philip had just detailed, as I was listening to Judge Mehta speak and then take that extra step to say that at no point during his career in sentencing has he ever had the opportunity to look at a pending defendant and say, I consider you a future danger to the future of the country. And when I heard that, I, I, not unlike Philip just stated, I, I anticipated much higher than an 18-year sentence. Not that I agree with the sentence, but I anticipated much more based on the way that he was leading up to it. Correct. Can you, um, the, the judge had much to say about the future of our democracy and your client's role in the future of our democracy. Can you speak to that? Can you also tell us, you know, how Rhodes is feeling when you talk to him um, since the yeah, I think the judge is speaking to the fact that uh, Rhodes continually, continually gets on the radio continually speaks about these things. I mean, he just recently, it's four days ago, and I think the judge is referencing those things. He's, Rhodes is not going to be quiet. Rhodes has an opinion. He's going to get it out there. Uh, there's a lot of people that believe his opinions are correct. Uh, the judge does not. And we've I never tried to silence yeah. him at all. Wait, what about the First Amendment? Doesn't Stuart have the right to the First Amendment freedom of speech? And this that, is way too... This clearly, is not the clearly that'll be part of the appellate issues. Yeah, yes, not, this absolutely. Not the venue for that and we've never tried to silence What do you Stuart? think, Ed? Speak up, Ed. Well, I think that uh, this case uh, was all about the weaponization of speech by the Department of Justice. And I think that essentially they have used Stuart Rhodes' words against him. Uh, it was not what his actions were, but it was his words. I mean, Mr. Bright and Mr. Linder and I all argued that he never went into the Capitol, he never assaulted anyone, he never destroyed any property. We argued all those matters during the trial and, and, and post-trial. And clearly, the words of Stuart Rhodes is what the judge returned to time and time again, what he had said over a long period of time. And just as Mr. Linder said, had he been in Austin, Texas on January 6th and not in Washington, D.C., would he have been indicted and prosecuted? No, because it was his words. And so the fact of the matter is, is that we think that ultimately this is going to be about free speech. Uh, we think that uh, we have a good appeal uh, coming on this. We look forward to the appeal, the appellate process. And, you know, we stand firmly uh, behind Stuart Rhodes. Uh, you know, we don't think he's a threat to society. We, we don't think that at all. And, uh, you know, absolutely he has a right to free speech. And, 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 and you know, none of us has, have ever tried to tell Stuart what to do. I and mean, he's, he's been able to speak freely all during this time. He uh, he's a political prisoner. What do you think? Well, he, he is a political prisoner, okay? Look, he is a graduate of Yale Law School. He wrote a paper that won a prize at Yale about uh, 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 civil rights and, and, and enemy, and combatants. enemy combatants. I mean, I mean. So we've been listening to attorneys for Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes. They said that freedom of speech will be 
part of their appeal. They're already vowing to do so. Today, Rhodes was sentenced to 18 years in prison for seditious conspiracy and other crimes related to the January 6th Capitol attack. It's the longest sentence in a January 6th case to date. We're going to take a quick break, but we've got a lot more news ahead. You're streaming CBS News, always on.